Post in at Concordia. Super. Is there a Christine Beckett in there? No. Not yet. You gonna open her up, Mike? Well, yeah. me too? Okay. Whenever we're ready, I'll start recording. We'll start recording and we'll open the doors. Fantastic. I'm just gonna put it onto gallery view and I am ready. <sighs> Have fun. Thank you for joining you. us. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start recording first, and then I'll open the room in one moment. Welcome everybody. Hi Velma. Hi Susan. Marianne. Thanks for joining us. Timothy. Welcome. Hi, Lulu. It's so nice to see many familiar faces. And Vilma, Marianne, Tim. Hey, welcome everybody. We're so happy that you're here. Thanks, Irene. Beautiful introduction. 
And uh, welcome to a new season of our Music Alive series where I know, yay, um, we have taken a lot of your ideas about presenters and we're super excited. We actually have a series of 10 sessions and I'll talk a little bit more later on um, about that. We're going to go till the end of June and then we'll take off for the summer. But we've changed the format from um, Focus on Seniors. We really gave a good dedication for, gosh, pretty much a year, Mike, right? To, uh, to seniors and we have some amazing, just wonderful, wonderful uh, videos to share with you. If you're interested to go back and look, you may do that on my website. And today um, I'm going to introduce Irene and Laura in a moment, but hey, Mike, you want to uh, give our, our regular introduction to the tech? Absolutely. Welcome back. Welcome to those of you who are just joining us for the first time. And I'd just like to remind everybody about a few Zoom basics, and that is uh, how to mute and unmute. So that's usually at the bottom left of your main screen. And uh, sometimes that bar goes away if you don't, uh, you might have to hover your cursor there or touch your screen to get that to come back. It's also good to be able to rename. I see it looks like everybody's done that at this point. But usually uh, you can click in the small box where your face is. And uh, in the upper right of that box, you'll have uh, three little dots there. It's called the overflow menu. And uh, if you click in there, you can rename yourself. And then it's also important to remember that you're in control of your own experience. So um, that means controlling your view in Zoom. So right now I'm in gallery view so I can see everyone. And that's a nice part of the experience. Um, but it's also good to be in speaker view and see the presenters, uh, make sure you don't miss anything. So we'll be putting, um, putting everyone, bouncing everyone into speaker view at some point, but you can always come back in the gallery view, gallery view anytime you like. Um, and that's usually in the upper right of your main big zoom screen. You'll see the word view or the word gallery view or speaker view. And that's where you click to switch. Uh, on some devices, like mobile devices, you swipe to change and you can't see everybody at the same time on gallery view. And um, I'll tell you, since it's a new season, I'll give it a more advanced tip, which is the microphone hotkey is Alt A. So I use that constantly instead of having to find the little thing and click it on the screen. It's probably a function A on a Mac, but try that out sometime. Alt A or function A. Thank you. Okay, kicking it off with new tech. Alt, did you say Alt A? Cool. Okay. Alt, Alt V for video. Oh, cool. All right. Nice. Um, okay, so I think most of you already know Irene. I'm just looking and uh, I'm going to do if Irene, if it's all right, I'll just give a quick if you want to add anything to it. Um, first of all, Irene is amazing. She has been a partner of mine for years now in music for people. She is just remarkable. She's a graduate. She came on staff. Um, we've done all kinds of collaborations together. And uh, it has been absolutely an honor and a joy to work with you. She is part-time faculty at Concordia University and also working. Are you still with McGill, Irene? I see that you don't have it on your bio. <laughs> She's also I, I do. I, I teach one course a year at McGill. Okay. And In music education. Yeah. And she just does amazing, amazing work. And so welcome irene and anything else you want to add um she is just in my my book a genius at what she's doing and amazing just a big thank you mary because yeah. i so enjoy working with you too and she's also a vocal uh her expertise is in voice and uh laura laura mitchell laura can you just wave so we can see um is executive director of student services and student success center i love that laura that's just such a great student success center i that just made me happy to read that at concordia as well and she completed her phd on the effects of music listening on physical pain that's awesome and tom um, taught music psychology in both scotland and canada yay uh with two colleagues she edited uh edited the book music health and well-being which is pu published by Oxford University in 2012. That's so cool. Um, so welcome, welcome. I, I met Lara and my many excursions up to Montreal, which I haven't been able to do lately. We hope in the future we will. Um, and I'm so excited they're kicking off the season with talking about the incredible work that they're doing on the university level uh, at Concordia. And so I am now going to hand it over to you both and we are yours and we're just so happy to have you here. 
Thank you so much, Mary. We're very excited to talk with you about how we're using music improvisation very much in the style of music for people, um, following the same philosophy. So applying music for people philosophy in contexts in the university environment, specifically for health and well-being as an extracurricular activity that is made available to students. So using music as a way to release stress, make friends, and uh, basically, uh, and, and learn at the same time, learn some musical skills at the same time. Laura, would you like to add anything before I present the video? Um, I don't think so. And yeah, super excited to see the video and then tell everybody a bit more. Great. It's so hard to describe Live Your Music at Concordia. So um, I thought that the nicest way to open it would be with a video piece. And uh, this is just a part of the video. Uh, the audio, so it's pictures and the audio is offered by a Concordia student by the name of Olivia Pichet, who did a very, very beautiful radio piece for Concordia Student Life. They say music soothes the soul. At least that's the idea here at Concordia's JMSB building every Wednesday night, where students and community members gather to take part in the Live Your Music Concordia project. Students are so often overwhelmed with work, money, issues, so much. And they can come and they can be engaged, meet other friends who have common interests, and basically build a community. Music professor Irene Fair says anyone is welcome. The point is to let people come together in a safe space to make music and to provide a sense of stress release. They enter into this state of flow where they forget about everything that's happening. They're just engaged with each other and engaged in the sound making process. The feeling in the room is full of encouragement, acceptance and individuality. Professor Fair runs the project along with Laura Mitchell of Concordia Student Success Centre. One of the things that's blown my mind has been the intergenerational um, and intercultural friendships. Participants don't have to be Concordia students, they just have to be willing to relax and relate to each other. It like keeps your stress level down and at the same time you feel the inner happiness. That's why I come here more often, spiritual inner happiness. After running the project successfully for almost two years, FAIR has received funding to continue and expand until 2023. For Concordia News, Olivia Miche. And because we don't have permission or signed permission from the students for the the music making itself. Um, we are not sharing the video, um, but the rest of the video. But as you probably have already guessed, this video was created pre-pandemic, uh, just to let you know that our weekly sessions are still going on online via Zoom, and we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that. So in short, the concept is having during the school semester, both schools, three school semesters, so fall, winter, summer, having hourly, a one hour weekly session that is open to Concordia and the surrounding community. And I will pass this to Laura. Thanks, Irene. Um, yeah, so, so a bit of the, the background of, of who we are at Concordia. Concordia is um, a, a very large urban university. It's right in the center of Montreal. Um, maybe some of you have, have visited us before. Um, I know that, that some, some have, have been our group here. Um, and we, are, we have around 50,000 students. It's a very large community. Um, and many of them are international. About almost 20% of our students are international from all over the world. Many from India, many from China, many from Iran. A really lovely, diverse community. Um, and 
I've, I've been hearing as, as part of my work in the Student Success Centre, which is essentially an, an academic support place, really. It is, it's a centre that's to help students to do well in class, to plan their career, um, to, you know, to navigate university, to meet other students and all of these things. But you can tell that obviously I had music in, in the back of my mind because of my, my previous work um, to think, how can, I, how can I bring this in um, to what I do here? I, I started to hear from a lot of our students as I got to know them that they were very sad that they'd had to give up their instruments as they as they came over to Montreal so many couldn't afford to continue their you know their music tuition that they had as a teenager many just couldn't bring their instruments from where they came from so it was always kind of in the back of my head about you know how can we how can we remedy this um, and another important you know aspect obviously of university work today is the health and well-being of our students this is more you know paramount than it ever has been um, and, a spit, and even before COVID, um, you know, and it's obviously just escalated. The, our, our care for them has really, you know, our th thoughtfulness about this has really escalated this year. But even before COVID, we were thinking about how to um, help our students to be healthy in a much more holistic way than used to be considered. So yes, we have a campus medical center, we have psychologists, we have, you know, health professionals, but we want to be upstream about our, our care of our students. We don't want to just be reactive and say, okay, you know, we'll book you an appointment with the psychologist when you're when you're not feeling good. We want to see how do we make a healthy community at Concordia. Um, and for me, music has, has got to be a part of that. You know, we have sports facilities, we have you know wonderful recreation, but music is is a piece that 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 cannot be, you know, cannot not be a part of this. So Back in 2016, I was very surprised to get a lovely invite from our um, university advancement asking me to do a talk at homecoming about music and health. Um, quite an unusual homecoming kind of topic, but um, I, I was thrilled to do that. And so I found myself, um, you know, with a great audience in front of me of alumni from Concordia um, and with a very particularly excited looking face in the audience um, of Irene, who just <laughs> looked utterly just you know, thrilled that, that this was taking place at Concordia um, and, and obviously couldn't wait to come and chat to me afterwards. So that was how we first met. Um, and that day I was talking about, um, you know, what, what nobody here needs convincing of, which is that obviously music has been imbued with therapeutic and medical value for, for thousands of years through many cultures, through many fascinating rituals, you know, procedures, religious ceremonies, whether it's for physical or for mental health. Um, and also talking about the fact that our modern approach to music and health, to approach any of these questions, we, we have to we have to view this from a view of an inextricable relationship between the social concepts that, that relate to music that we play together, the cultural aspects of music, and the psychological aspects of music. It's a very multifaceted relationship that, um, that comes together in the way that, that music can keep us healthy. Um, and that was what I studied for, you know, for almost a decade as, as a professor, um, that I was finding research evidence that if we use music in a very knowledgeable way, there's certainly, you know, there's a body of evidence now that has many positive effects. Um, and in, in looking at pain in particular, physical pain, um, my work was trying to build up a reliable, robust set of evidence that clinicians could use in order to, you know, to, to, to bring music more into, um, to care for, for any health condition, um, particular, obviously those particularly painful, it could be dental work or it could be um, uh, it, things that we, procedures that we have to go through that medication is not required. It's not, it's not able to act quickly enough. So say like if somebody has burns and they're having dressings changed, um, then music can be a, a wonderful uh, distraction and emotional support for a, a procedure like that that's that's quick but but very uncomfortable. Um, so I was working in a field of you know talking to music therapists about where music psychology and music therapy can meet and how we can use listening and playing in real world settings to help us cope with unpleasant 
health issues and to integrate it into our care for you know a number a number of health conditions. Um, so so Irene and I got, obviously got got talking immediately about the possibilities at Concordia and the what what came to mind for us in terms of thinking about what Live Your Music could be is a place of mindfulness and presence for our students. Our students are, are in, for any of you that, that work in education, you'll know this, they're in a very, um, they're in a hamster wheel of, of grade, you know, racing towards grades. Um, that they're always thinking about their midterm, their paper, their final, you know, and there's, there's very little space for them to really sit back and reflect on their education. It really is, it's a, you know, a cyclical process that goes on across the year. And as soon as they take a breath, they're registering for their next class and they're thinking about what happens next semester. So, um, and, and also on a, on a day, daily basis, I, I worry about our students relaxing by also engaging with other linear, um, and stimuli. So a student switches off from class, they look at Facebook, they scroll through the news, they look at other stuff that is basically in the same format, like all, like all of us do. Like their, their, their brains are getting very little time to switch into kind of unforced concentration, you know, in, in terms of a flow state, they're getting very little time to, to zone out and to be mindful and to let the, the wonderful brain systems that we have work in terms of, you know, putting together illogical things and being creative and, and being interesting. Um, and then lastly, the other thing that really um, excited us about our idea is that we could really bring the community together. We could bring together our students with um, community members of different ages, of different um, francophone people that from, from Montreal that may not normally speak to Concordia students a lot, um, and that we could help them to meet each other and to, to really feel a sense of belonging because um, the, the one of the primary factors of student success is a sense of belonging to your university and as part of your community. Um, and what, what better than, than music to help us achieve that? Um, so I'll, I'll pass back to Irene to tell us um, a bit more about, about what happened with the group. Thanks so much, Laura. So music for people, you know, I've, I'm a formally trained musician. And I just want to begin the, the, the musical track with how uh, when I was in my early 20s and first went to university, I did the ch sensible thing and decided to go into more academic, you know, studies that were not, wouldn't make me a musician. And I always remember one moment I was on the Loyola campus of Concordia University where the music, the Department of Music used to be. And I remember walking by the refractory building and hearing the music coming out of the windows. And something pulled me and said, gosh, I'm in the wrong place. I want to be in there. I want to be making music. So speed ahead to uh, many years of formal musical training and uh, becoming a classical singer and pedagogue. And then I meet music for people. And this was in 2013. And it was basically, it returned me to my roots, which was my roots were playing with rock bands, jamming with people, doing cover music, playing guitar, doing everything by ear. And, uh, you know, I stepped into music for people. And for me, it was like coming home. And what blew me away was the idea that within minutes, a group of strangers playing different instruments could come together in music. Now, this is facilitated, of course, and this was when I first saw Mary Kanish uh, in the center facilitating bringing us all together. So what started out, you know, what could have potentially have been chaos, Mary created this incredible synergy between all of the players using the simplest of techniques. So basically coming from silence, pulse, and tone. And I noticed, I had observed that uh, no matter what instrument you were playing, um, it could fit in. 
uh, music for people had supplied a lot of instruments. So there were a lot of percussion instruments. There were melodic percussions. And people also had electric guitars. P um, there were five pianos in the room. This was at uh, State University of uh, uh, New York State University in Fredonia. So SUNY Fredonia. And so there were four pianos in the room. People had guitars. People had trumpets. Um, lots of singers and all kinds of drums. Um, and then all kinds of unusual instruments, such as the, at the time, there was, there were not these rav vasts, but there were what they were called, um, hung drums and, um, and dulcimers and all kinds of instruments. And there we were making this sound that was so alive. It was really, I, my first impression was I have never heard anything this exciting, this full of life and this full of breath. So, of course, I immediately joined the program and the rest is history. But coming back to Concordia, as I circle at Concordia, Mary mentioned that I teach at McGill. Um, McGill is a much more formal, top-down, structured music program. Concordia has a music program that is much more bottom-up, structured around the students, where the students get to create their musical experiences. Um, and the courses are, are more innovative and the students build up their own programs and they can do a performance specialization, a composition specialization or electroacoustics or jazz or just a general music program and end it off with what's called a capstone project. And our students, unlike McGill students who generally come in with conservatory training and many years of, of training in music, um, the Concordia students come in from very from all kinds of backgrounds of training. And uh, some may not have received so much formal training. Uh, they may have taken private music lessons or they may have learned instruments on their own and taken uh, music theory and caught up on things. And the age, uh, the ages of the students are quite different. And again, the musical backgrounds as well. So, uh, for example, I went to Concordia as an undergraduate um, at the ripe old age of uh, 29, and I had had some classical voice lessons, but, uh, you know, I had not done any conservatory training. I could play piano and play guitar and read chords and music, but I was certainly not the, the profile of a uh, conservatory trained student. So, as a... I, after completing my degrees there, I continued on to graduate studies and then returned to Concordia just by, I, I don't know how it just happened, but I wound up there again as a teacher. And I love teaching there because it really represents so much of my belief. And of course, I, which is that I love to nourish the love of music in people. And um, I... I, you know, what I just sensed was that, so I teach voice at Concordia, what I sensed was that the Department of Music would be open for me to look at adopting such a project as Live Your Music at Concordia, as basically uh, using community music to create community university-wide. Uh, of course, the chair of my department, um, Mark Corwin, was very, very supportive. Uh, and I was really, you know, pleased because we have a beautiful classroom that we're able to work in. Um, uh, thanks to Mary Knish um, and uh, Remo Drums, I was able to acquire quite a lot of uh, percussion instruments, which became my own personal investment. So I invested in all kinds of percussion instruments to basically create the same environment as at a music for people workshop. And so many students could come in and use these instruments. The, the instruments that I chose are very, very easily accessible. In other words, you don't have to spend hours and hours learning how to play them. Um, so the Rav Vast, for example, you can quite quickly learn to get a beautiful sound. And if you can't do it with your hands, you can do it, for example, with very soft mallets. And you can achieve a very nice sound. Um, 
meeting Laura, who who, uh, loved the idea and the support of the music department, uh, the Department of Music, uh, really uh, set everything up. So we had, uh, thanks to Laura, we had some funding for initiatives. And of course, Concordia is very, very set on the student health and well-being. Um, There's a, a lot of caring at Concordia about the well-being of students And the university really does go out of its way with support systems and a a lot of money is put in um, to the university, mostly by private funding, um, to support student health and well-being. So through um, initiatives funding, um, we were able to launch our first year. And um, it was a tremendous success. So um, I did what every good facilitator will do. I collected um, data. I collected uh, photographs of students. I had uh, audio clips and I collected testimonials. And with all of this, I was able to create a presentation and work alongside with Laura. Uh, we, with the support of Laura, uh, we went to see the, the alumni, alumni association and the Alumni Association just loved what we proposed. And we said, you know, we, we, we had initiatives funding for a year and we would like to keep this project alive. So I will tell you, Alumni in Relations went out of their way for us. And uh, they loved what we presented and they put together a, a, a package and they reached out to Concordia Alumni. And I was actually with Mary, (laughs) we had just, uh, we were going to uh, facilitate a music for people workshop. And I received the call from Concordia that a single alumnus who wanted to remain um, um, anonymous donated $25,000 to run the, to help us run the program for three years. The alumnus was a former music student who had basically said, music has enriched my life and I'm hoping that it can enrich the lives of others. So we took off with this in our first year, which was uh, 2019 to 2020 with that funding was a great success. And the video that you saw was a video of that. We wanted to also bring more students into the picture. So uh, part of the budget was also to um, have students involved in promoting the project, in uh, helping me set up and co-facilitate, and also offering um, uh, paying music for people training for Concordia students who were interested in applying. Of course, because nobody knew much about it, I approached the music students who were particularly keen about the project, and they jumped at the chance to take part in Music for People's Musicianship Leadership Program. And so um, these students would be co-facilitating and helping me with the sessions, greeting people as they come in, helping people with instruments, getting in the middle of the circle and facilitating. So the whole idea was really to build a strong music presence. And of course, as the facilitator, the the whole idea, well, they're getting their training in music facilitation doing this. Um, So um, what wound up, so I want to describe a little bit of the live sessions. So we chose a time of the day that would be um, early enough for students, but late enough that it was mostly at the end of their day. So we chose a time at the time at the university, we chose six, six, six o'clock in the evening because it just seemed like a really good time. And um, basically I would start like any music for people session. We had this fantastic room at the department of music that is soundproof. Um, It also has um, all uh, a grand piano as well as amplifiers. So we even had a few students who brought their electric basses and their electric guitars, which was just terrific. And uh, we had students coming from engineering. We had students coming from education. We had students coming from, let's see, math, education, um, fine arts, dance, uh, just all kinds of different departments who came in for the sessions communication studies. 
Um, and so as the facilitator, I would be sitting already in music. So I, like the session began and I was playing the Rav Vast. As soon as a new student would walk into the room, um, they usually looked very, very shy. There'd be music already happening. I would ask the Concordia students who were involved in the MLP training to please, if they saw somebody looking a little ill at ease and at discomfort, welcome them, say hi, welcome. These instruments, we had a whole set of instruments that were out and available for them to play. We'd also placed drums in the circle. So, um, so that the students could right away just drop right into the music making and didn't, and it was all, of course, I would start with a very, very simple structure. So I would just say that to them, settle in and sound. And while this is happening, I'm looking around the circle and I'm getting to know the players through their actions, through their body language, through how they're playing their instruments, through their choice of instruments, through how loud they're playing, how soft they're playing. Um, noticing the, their just overall you know, body language and comfort level. Some of them would even back their chairs a little out of the circle. <laughs> but giving them a chance to settle in. And then I would start the facilitation process. So again, using drum circle, combining drum circle and conducting techniques that, um, but to, to create um, free improvisation with both melody and rhythm. So setting up a steady platform. So for example, um, let's all choose one note, any note, make it your note. So if they're playing on a drum, I say, that's fine. Your drum actually has a pitch and a note. So just play in that same part of the drum and just find a sound that you love. And uh, how much can you do with that one note? And then so everyone's playing together and it's this most unusual chord but then I could invite a more experienced player or a player who's already familiar to start playing over this. And the faces start to change because they're realizing, oh, this is strange, but it, it works in kind of a strange way and so on. And then it builds from there. And um, icebreaker games. So again, um, being the facilitators, we're okay with being a little clownish. So we demonstrate a lot about what we would do. So for example, if we would say, okay, we're going to pass one sound around the circle. So what do I mean by one sound? So I could do a very serious, ooh, or play one note on my instrument, or do something kind of wacky like, oh. So it could be just one sound. And then pass it around the circle. And of course, I always made sure that I had a more experienced player beside me because that experienced person would just know exactly what to do. So I'd pass the sound and then they would pass it to the next person and then it would go around the circle. Then I'd say, okay, how fast can we get around the circle? So we'd go and see how fast we could get around the circle. And then, okay, next challenge, you can change direction. So of course you'd have a back and forth sometimes with the same two people and the creativity that emerged but it was just fantastic. And it was to watch the students gradually dropping into flow. So the whole idea as the facilitator is to create first a very, very light atmosphere, very unlike a formal music classroom, break the ice so that the students are immediately dropping in and having fun. And what they start to realize is that there are no no wrong notes, quality over quantity, um, release expectations, all of these wonderful philosophies that I learned from music for people. Sing what you play, play what you sing. Silence is your friend. So I even permitted students, hey, if you don't want to make a sound, you can offer your silence and a gesture. And some did. So it was just basically looking for how can I serve the students? How can I be in service to the students? So the same students started to come back week after week and friendships started to form. And it was amazing to notice what would happen at the, after the sessions, because the students, while we were cleaning up, the students would hang around and jam. <laughs> so it was really beautiful to watch that synergy, those friendships that emerged. And of course, I would like to mention that um, I, have, I had also reached out to 
people who had already known my work in Montreal with music for people, and they spread the word. So I see, uh, you know, a few people who are here, Marianne, Michel, and, uh, you know, so quite a few people, they, they brought friends and quite a few people came to the session. So it became intergenerational. And this enthusiasm just continued to build. We also had some support, financial support, from people who were also from the community who were attending the sessions. And they were just so eager to keep this thing going. And then, of course, uh, early in March, we had our final session and the whole COVID outbreak happened. And um, if I must say, if it weren't for Mary Kanish to uh, immediately say to me, hey, let's try some music for people stuff online. So we tried this thing called Fill Your Home with Music, this wonderful project with Mary Kanish and Kleena Niedon, um, a colleague that uh, who is all the way in Switzerland, who I met through Mary online, who I probably otherwise may not have met yet. Uh, so we started Fill Your Home with Music and it worked. I mean, it, it you know, we made it work, let's say, and the community made it work. So when I say we made it work, it was not only us, the facilitators, it was the community who came in on the Zoom calls. So I thought, well, heck, I'm going to try this out with Live Your Music at Concordia. And it, again, we made it work. The students came on and we made it work. And this year we have continued it online. And, uh, and probably next year, we are looking at having more of a hybrid version, a combination of, uh, of online and live, all things, you know, also, of course, following the health, um, the, the health guidelines that are offered by the province of Quebec, we need to follow those. And the University Concordia is a little bit of a challenging, challenging structure, because it is a very vertical campus. So uh, in the midst of a pandemic, this can be a little bit problematic, but we have an amazing space at Concordia where we did one presentation. You saw a photograph of it earlier. It's called the fourth space. And the fourth space is on the ground floor of one of the campus buildings. And its windows in the summer can be opened. So it's basically a how shall I say it? It's that there are no walls separating the fourth space and the street. So people can come in and out. And the whole idea of the fourth space was to share um, community ideas and to really create this strong link between the university and the surrounding Montreal environment. So we did a uh, Live Your Music at Concordia session there for um, um, a health week uh, this was in September of 20, uh, my goodness, of 2019. It's so strange. Uh, <laughs> some time has just disappeared. Um, but it was in September of 2019. And so we would love to keep the fourth space as maybe a potential option um, in the fall or uh, perhaps in the spring during the warm months when the walls can be opened. So um, I will pass this to Laura, who might be able to share some of the observations that she has had as a music psychologist of the students and participants. Thanks, Irene. And, and, and for sure, you've mentioned, you've mentioned some of it already that I'll cover. But um, yeah, some of the, the loveliest things that we saw in the group were certainly the, the intergenerational friendships that developed. Um, and community members who, like, who, like I said before, I probably would never have come in contact with one another. Our, our students, especially our international students who might be shy about their English or their French, um, and who you know might might tend to stick together with with other friends that come from the same place as them, um, you know, for for community and then safety. Um, we found them. At, completely at ease and relaxed and you know musically communicating and eventually communicating in other ways um, with our with our other group members and that was really really lovely to witness um, as Irene mentioned another thing that that was very noticeable to me was the changes in our students both over time 
Um, and even within one session, I'll, I'll never forget a particular student who came in um, out of the blue to one of the groups, very, very hesitant and uh, very tense. Um, and she had a hoodie kind of pulled up and um, there was, you know, like a real feeling of, I, I don't know how she had the bravery actually to even walk in the door, but but somehow she did. Um, and she was very tentative with the instruments. And I think somebody had given her a drum and she was tapping it silently and, um, you know, still looking really quite worried about what was going on around her at the beginning. And what had she, you know, what had she walked into? And uh, through Irene's facilitation style of never never leaving anybody behind you know like that really inclusive feel in the room one hour later this student was smiling broadly banging away on a drum um so you know all of the stress was gone and it was just lovely to see this um a, a very very startling change and then and then over time in, in terms of weeks as well we've also seen a change in our students in terms of their confidence and their, you know, their um, all of the things that we that we try and teach in other ways through the Student Success Centre. You know, we have many seminars on on your professional skills in the future, how to be collaborative, you know, how to listen and um, really coming to live your music would be one of the best ways for our students to learn this because you could see them develop careful turn taking over time. Um, listening techniques, making space for one another in a way that, you know, that we would always hope people would behave professionally, um, all of these skills developing, um, which was, which was really touching. And I think all of us have learned, we've, we've transported the skills that we've learned there into other areas of, of life. My, my best friend, for example, has um, really taken to the idea of double your silence. Um, and she says that whenever she's in a stressful work meeting, um, she uses double your silence. She just says it through as a mantra and, and it helps her to, to calm down rather than, you know, I think most of us would tend to, to do the opposite and try and, you know, explain ourselves and, and, and maybe, maybe talk too much. Um, other other quick observations were the new experiences that our students um, had. I, we we witnessed one of our female students play a piano for the first time in her life. Um, one night she'd never touched one before. That was really really lovely to see. Um, the bravery that they have of coming forward and putting themselves in front of everybody. Um, a lot of students, you know, suffer from. Uh, anxiety when they have to give presentations and things in class is one of our most frequent questions um, in the Student Success Centre and I saw you know really development of, of real confidence in our students um, and as Irene mentioned bringing their friends like in a, in a real community the the engineers have been um, some of the most startling um, of our we have a, a massive engineering community that takes part in this group and often we've wondered I wonder why is it that they need a bit of creativity <laughs> that's, you know, <laughs> in their lives or, you know, these, these very structured individuals. Um, and I don't know, well, maybe we'll never know the answer to this, but they've been a, a wonderful, wonderful addition and, and the, the sheer joy that you see in them is, is great. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I could go on at length, but there's, there's been, you know, such such effects in our students that I'm so proud of what we've done in this group. Thanks, Laura. I'll share a couple of testimonials. So um, I have one, this is from one of our engineering students. Um, and he writes, I'm sorry, forgive my poor vision. Um, I'm an avid bass player. Ever since I started playing bass guitar, I was wondering to discover psychedelic experience in all genres of music all my life. Also, I have curiosity about playing an instrument in a musical community in order to stimulate my ideas for mixing Turkish Anatolian rock music with other cultural influences. When I found Concordia Live Your Music community, I had a great feeling about that. I had hesitation to keep up with somebody's beat during jam sessions, but I quickly got over that. And thanks to the community, um, um, 
I became more aware about the music that is made from people's heart and soul. I got the idea that there is no wrong notes and every note has a place somewhere. The important thing is how you reflect the sound. Briefly, I'm a lucky person that I have the chance of being involved in this community. Then I have a complete novice player who is an engineer. Um, I've been attending Live Your Music at Concordia since 2019, and so far it has been an amazing experience. Despite not having any expertise with musical instruments, I could still participate and enjoy with other peers. It's such a welcoming environment where everyone can get joy and peace through music. Um, thanks to all the participants for making this special, even now online. And I would like to end with one of the young facilitators who was being trained in our program. And um, let's see, he wrote, it was quite amazing what he wrote. So he wrote here, my experience in MFP training has been amazing and life-changing, even after only one year of being in the program. I'm working in a farm in a small town, and my coworkers and I now spend few weekends camping out in the woods. We haul out our musical instruments in the wild. We, wild. we jam, we listen to each other. This wonderful experience would never have been possible. And finally... Uh, someone wrote here that was the same student to hear a shy member of the group contribute a special sound. I could go on and on about the personal experience, but the real prize of this is the shared community aspect in making silly noises together where the barriers of normal social interactions can be broken down to a point where two strangers can achieve profound solidarity during a session lasting less than an hour. And when vocalizing without language, we can express our deepest, em our deepest emotions without fear of judgment. This is a level of vulnerability that for some of us, isn't easily achieved with words, even among close friends. An environment in which a community sitting in a circle is sharing in some musical goodness. To me, it evokes both the ancient human memory of shared music and the hope of a fair future egalitarian musical utopia. It is the community building aspect of this mode of musicking that I find so important for us social creatures. I hope to share the feelings I described with people my whole life. This is a student in his 20s in the musicianship leadership program. And I thought that would be the best way to end and open the floor to any questions. Can I jump in right on top there or tagging on to that? Because we've got a testimonial right here in the chat. Um, and I probably won't say your name right. I'm sorry. Marianne uh, wrote that being there with Irene and peers was an absolute joy. Irene is so at ease and her experience is huge. My best musical moments were there. A gift. Thank you, Marianne. And Marianne is a fabulous percussionist and musician who is also in the musicianship leadership program with music for people. So I'm sure you'll be you'll be seeing Marianne facilitating <laughs> in the coming future and enjoying Marianne's sessions. Yeah, I think if you have questions, you can unmute Leanne. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the, the, the structure. So do you guys meet once a week? Yes. And is it over an entire semester? So how many times would that be over a semester? Once a week, uh, the semester is 13 weeks, so 13 weeks. And and is it how, how long is a session? One hour. 
and it takes us about a half an hour to set the room up when we're live. Mm-hmm. And it takes us about a half an hour to tear down the room. And usually the students hang around afterwards and play the whole time. We actually have to say, we have to close up. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you initially get get the word out amongst the greater Concordia population? Like, what did you do to kind of advertise the... The posters. <laughs> Both Laura and I are laughing. So we had posters. We had students who were working. We had uh, two students working in community outreach and promotion. So uh, we put posters up all, they put posters all up around the university. And it seemed to be the, that was the way that uh, brought the students in. Um, And it's interesting, word of mouth, I think, you know, one person would have gotten it from the poster and that person would come and would bring their friends. So I would have to say that the power of word of mouth is the most valuable. Um, We also have a Facebook page, uh, which will be posted. So uh, that worked quite well. And of course, we were on the Concordia events page and uh, the students would be doing all kinds of outreach uh, around the the community. But uh, it's interesting because definitely word of mouth is to me the most powerful, uh, powerful vehicle and uh, just uh, quickly speaking of uh, word of mouth uh, it's actually thanks to uh, Michelle Hikimi who is there right now that I got into the live your music at Concordia uh, meetings every week uh, online so it's been uh, probably about five or six months since I've been there and uh, I've actually missed only one session and that's when I had the, the worst cold of my life so it's the only reason I could miss that meeting when the thing was two weeks ago or something. But uh, other than that, I, I I have to change all my schedule if anything happens because I really want to be there. Five thirty was <laughs> that precious moment every week. So I really enjoy uh, what Irene and uh, Concordia is offering to uh, the community in Montreal. It's really amazing. Thank you, Tim. Well, we love having you. <laughs> And, uh, and our co facil and I co facilitate the sessions online. Actually, there's one right after this at 530, um, which I co facilitate with a graduate of Concordia Music, a graduate in composition, uh, Kate Markle, a wonderful, wonderful facilitator and musician who is in the Musicianship Leadership Program. Are there any other questions? It was just a great presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Hey, Susan. Do you have any um, thoughts about opening it up to a larger community, i.e. through a Zoom or so so forth for those outside that want to participate? Anyone is welcome to our Zoom sessions. Mike will actually post up our Facebook page and a link. Anyone is welcome to join. And we actually want to take advantage of the idea of the Zoom sessions that we can really expand the community. So um, and hoping that maybe we can partner up with other universities. That would be super awesome, too. Great. Uh, Irene, I did, um, remember Mary, I went to University of Victoria I cut quite a few years ago and I uh, trained some, some young people at the university and doing very similar through a fellow called Henry Locke, who's, um, he is uh, a minister. I know that name. Is oh, he, he, is he involved uh, with the CMA, the Community Music Action? I don't know. He, he's, uh, he is the head of the, um, uh, of the interfaith chapel that is a beautiful building in the University of Victoria. And mm. he, I got through to him through Sienna Caspar, who was a drum circle facilitator with, through Arthur Hull. And anyway, they're doing, they've been doing it for quite a few years because I, and I, get, I ended up giving them some of my older instruments. So oh. I, I just thought, oh my God, we got to connect you guys together. <gasps> what a and wonderful her, idea, yeah. Lulu. Yeah, because I, so I'm going to find out whether I don't know what's happened during COVID, but they were a, quite a strong and it was really exactly what uh, Laura, what you were talking about. The reason for doing it was 
stress relief and getting the community together. And it did that. So, okay, well, we'll figure it out. That's yeah, wonderful. I'd love to join you next, but I have another thing that I have to go to right away. But I'd love to do I'd any to Wednesday, do any Wednesday, at 5 30 to 6 30 until June 30th. Okay. Thank you. And thanks so much. This was so wonderful. That quote that you just let, read at the end made me cry. I mean, it did. Cause Beautiful. It, yeah. It's just what we've been doing all these years. So, you know what I'll do, Mary? I could give you the quote so you could post it. Sure. In the notes. That would be, that would be great. great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So that brings us almost to the top of the hour. Thank you so much, Laura and Irene. Give them kind of a virtual woohoo. <laughs> so nice to open up the season. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping donations. Uh, again, as we kick off this series, it's really helpful just for Robin, who does all of the newsletters and gets the word out and organizes, etc. Um, she's my assistant, so we use donations to just kind of help the management and keeping this running. We appreciate anything. Um, and the link is there. Mike, if you'll pop the link on there, be great. Uh, upcoming next week is Alicia Ross uh, Ram. I'm not sure. Ram Charitar. I'm not sure. I didn't ask her how to say her name, but she's been teaching virtually online K through 12 drum circles. And she's going to share some of her best practice, things that are working really great for her. So we're super excited to have her there to join us next week, same time, same place. Um, Mike and I are doing on May 15th, a Saturday from 3 to 5.30. We are teaching our second um, intro to leading music and wellness program course online. Um, so it's basically how to do this online for music and wellness. and engaging mind and body for groups of all ages, all abilities. And so registration is on my website. Well, uh, just go to the page front opening page and it's there. The innovative music for people, innovative uh, educator series. We've had three and uh, we have the last one this Sunday from two to four. You can check that out. Tim Simmons is doing some amazing work in Philadelphia. And uh, oh, sorry. Ugh. See, of course, that has to happen in the middle of that. OK, um, Tim is is doing mind and body. Uh, he's been doing neuroscience research and I'm always interested in that and working with um, kids with uh, all kinds of learning disabilities. And so he's really pretty fascinating. And his is called Connecting Body and Mind Through Music. I'll be joining him doing a segment on Explore, Create and Discover with best practice uh, experiential learning techniques. And again, I'm going to be looking at neuroscience and, um, and learning. And then so that's also on my website front. And then we have our monthly fill, uh, fill your home with music with Irene and I and Kleena that we started all the way last year and we've moved it now. We were every week then and we've moved it to just a once a month. It's a wonderful community and we just had one. So it's the end of um, this month, right? End of May. May. Yeah, end of yes. May. So uh, you can check that out as well. I think that covers everything. It's always the last Saturday of Mike. The month. Uh, last Saturday of the month. And hey, Mike, yes. I'm just, we're, we're hitting you with a, a ton of events and links and all that. I just, we'll, we'll level up again this season and we'll um, mention that you can save the chat. If you have the chat oh, window yes. open, in the bottom right, again, you'll see three magical dots. And if you click there, you'll have the ability to save the chat. And that's going to save in your, probably in your documents folder under the word Zoom. Thank you. And Mike, you put some nice notes as we went along. So that was beautiful. Thank you so much. And so for anyone watching the video later, Mary's website is, of course, music for wellness with the, the numeral for musicforwellness.com. Dot com. And uh, most of these others can be found through Concordia University. And hey, Mike, would you mind popping just the last link again for people so they could jump on really easily and register the link for Live Your Music at Concordia if anyone wants to join oh, us yeah, at 530? Please. Will do. So thanks everybody. Wow, thanks for kicking off the season, Irene and Laura. That was just beautiful to see what you, the amazing work you're doing in Canada. So uh, join us again. We've got a great series with all kinds of people coming up from 
uh, Italy. We've got Stefano doing a session. Um, he, Baroni, he's amazing body percussionist, going to lead us in a whole bunch of things. And we've got Jim Donovan, who's pretty remarkable um, trainer and facilitator and musician. Uh, he was in Rusted Root, if you know that band. I love that band. So he was a musician in Rusted Root, and he's fabulous. Um, i trying to think of who else. Lucas is coming from Canada. Uh, Lucas Coffey. So we have him closing the series. And uh, it should be really cool. Jim, oh, Kofi from Ghana. Kofi Dancor is going to do one. So we're all over the world this uh, season. We're super excited. So join us again and um, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you can you. unmute and say goodbye. Yes, thank you. Please open and, and say goodbye and give our, our presenters a big woo -hoo. Everybody. Woo -hoo. Thank you. Okay. Hope to see you later. Well, in a half an hour. <laughs> Thanks so much. See you later. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. You can use the link any week, Lulu. Thank you. See you later. Thanks so much. Hey, Mary, I got to talk to you later. Or when it okay. can. About the, about, did you send a summary to, to Tom Tom? No. <laughs> <laughs>